in this video, we want to connect Euclidean domains and GCDs. And we're going to start by recalling from last time what happens when you apply successive divisions in a Euclidean domain. So what does that look like? Let's say R is a Euclidean domain and A and B are elements of R that are both non-zero. By successive divisions in R, we have this division algorithm. And we know that we can write A equals Q0 times B plus R0, where we know the norm of R0 is less than the norm of B. Or maybe R0 is equal to 0, but um, we'll get to that in a minute. And then, OK, so suppose that R0 is not 0, then we can uh, apply the division algorithm now to B and R0. And we can write B equals Q1 R0 plus R1, where, OK, maybe R1 is 0. But if not, at least we can write this in such a way there that where the norm of R1 is less than the norm of R0. And then we can apply the division algorithm again, but this time to R0 and R1 and get R0 equals Q2 R1 plus R2. And we get this sequence of remainders. And when we take the norms, we're getting a strictly decreasing sequence of non-negative integers. So it must terminate. At some point, we have Rn minus 2 equals Qn plus sorry, qn times rn minus 1 plus rn, where the norm of rn is less than the norm of rn minus 1. And then rn equals qn plus 1 times rn with no remainder, plus 0. We know we hit this point where we have no remainder, where we get exactly uh, some r that shows up in the sequence equals q, some q times the next remainder. OK. So what's going on here is now the idea is going to be, where do GCDs come from? So we talked about the Euclidean algorithm in Z, and we saw that the GCD of A and B was equal to the last non-zero remainder that came along in this sequence where we applied the division algorithm repeatedly. And that is true in a general Euclidean domain. So here's the theorem. Let's say that D is this Rn, the last non-zero remainder when we repeatedly apply the division algorithm to A and B in this way. Then, one, D is the GCD of A and B. And two, the ideal generated by D is equal to the ideal generated by A and B. In particular, that means the element D is in the ideal generated by A and B. So D is an R linear combination of A and B. That means there exist two elements, X and Y, in R, such that D equals A times X plus B times Y. That's what it means to be in the ideal generated by A and B. All right, so why is this good? Because now, how do you compute the GCD of A and B in your Euclidean domain R? You just apply this Euclidean algorithm, this repeated division algorithm starting with A and B, then to B in the first remainder, then to R0 and R1, and so on and so on. And at some point, you hit some last non-zero remainder. And that gives you a greatest common divisor, which is what you were looking for. So I mentioned that there are rings where GCDs are not guaranteed to exist. And there are things in the middle as well. There are things where GCDs do exist, but we don't have this nice algorithmic way to find them. We're computing GCDs might actually be kind of painful. So yeah, this is a really, really desirable property of a Euclidean domain, that it gives you an algorithmic way to compute the GCD of two elements. If you think about it in terms of ideals, you, know, you have the ideal generated by A and B, and you're looking for the unique smallest principal ideal containing this ideal. Uh, it's giving you a way to find a generator of that ideal. OK, so that's already getting into the proof a little bit. So what's the idea of the proof is we proved this statement last time that Euclidean domains are principal ideal domains. So in particular, this ideal generated by A and B is a principal ideal. OK. And this proposition that we proved in the last video said that in the case where the ideal generated by A and B is principal, what is a GCD of A and B? Well. It's any generator of this principal ideal. The unique smallest principal ideal containing the ideal generated by A and B is 
the ideal generated by A and B, which is principal. So you know that the ideal generated by A and B is principal. So now the name of the game is to find the generator of this ideal. So that's the idea. That's all that we have to do. So what do we want to do? We want to show that the ideal generated by A and B is the ideal generated by this Rn, the last non-zero remainder. And then we're going to be done. And we're going to do this by showing containment both ways. So uh, we first have to show that D is a common divisor of A and B, that that means on the level of ideals that the ideal generated by A and B is contained in the ideal generated by D. And then we'll show containment the other way, which will mean that the ideal generated by A and B is the ideal generated by D. So we have to show that D is in the ideal generated by A and B, which is the same as showing that D is an R linear combination of A and B, that there exist X and Y, so that D equals AX plus BY. That means that the ideal generated by D is contained in the ideal generated by A and B. So these ideals are equal. And by what we just said, D is one generator for this ideal. So that is a GCD of A and B. So I'm going to pause and erase. And we'll see how to prove these two statements. Both of them are going to be very similar. They're going to go by induction looking at this stack of equations. Let's complete the proof of this theorem by proving these two statements. So for the first one, what do we want to do? We want to show that, uh, yeah, so for the first one, we want to see that this D divides A and D divides B. So Rn divides A and Rn divides B. And what we're going to do is keep track of the divisibilities in the Euclidean algorithm starting from the bottom equation and going back up to the top. So what's the idea? We want to show that Rn divides like everything in sight. And since Rn minus 1 is equal to Qn plus 1 times Rn, Rn divides Rn minus 1. So now we're going to use the fact that Rn divides Rn minus 1 to see that Rn divides Rn minus 2. Since Rn minus 2 equals Qn times Rn minus 1 plus Rn, and Rn divides Rn minus 1, it divides this first term, certainly divides itself, the second term, so it divides the sum. So Rn divides Rn minus 2. So to make this idea formal, what's going on is we're doing induction going from n down to 0. So let's suppose that Rn divides Rn, Rn minus 1, down to Rk. And we want to show that Rn divides Rk minus 1. Well, what is Rk minus 1? It's Qk plus 1 times Rk plus Rk plus 1. And Rn divides Rk, so it divides this first term. It also divides the second term, so it divides the sum also. OK, so continuing in this way, you divide each one going down to R0, and then also B, and then also A. So Rn divides A, and Rn divides B, and that is what we wanted to show in the first part. OK, so to show containment the other way, uh, what do we want? We want to show that D, the element D, is in the ideal generated by A and B, that Rn is an R linear combination of A and B. So what we're going to do is show that Rn is in the ideal generated by A and B, again, by induction. So starting now from the top equations and going down. R0 is equal to A minus Q0 times B. A is in the ideal generated by A and B. Q0 times B is in the ideal generated by A and B. So R0 is in the ideal generated by A and B. So now we're going to use the fact that R0 is in this ideal to see that R1 is in this ideal. So R1 is B minus Q1 times R0. Q1 times R0 is in the ideal generated by A and B, because R0 is in the ideal generated by A and B. B is definitely in there, so this difference is in there too. And we see that R1 is in the ideal generated by A and B. So it's the same idea as before, but before we went from the bottom back up to the top, here we're going from the top down to the bottom. So we're doing induction on K. Let's suppose that Rk minus 1 and Rk are in the ideal generated by A and B. And we're going to see that Rk plus 1 is in the ideal generated by A and B. 
And that's true because that is uh, RK minus one minus QK plus one times RK. So this is in the ideal generated by A and B also. And going all the way down, we conclude that Rn is in the ideal generated by A and B. So that means that the ideal generated by Rn, combining these two observations, is the ideal generated by A and B, which we know is principal. So Rn is a generator for this ideal. So that is a GCD of A and B. And we are done with the proof of this theorem. OK, so I'll pause and erase. And the last thing that we'll see in this uh, lecture is, OK, so this statement about D being an R linear combination of A and B says something about solving the equation D equals AX plus BY in this ring R. So we'll see what happens in particular when R is Z. If we take R to be Z, which we know is Euclidean domain, and A and B to mean non-zero integers, and let D be the GCD of A and B, we have just seen that D is an R linear combination, or in this case, a Z linear combination of A and B, that there exist integers X and Y, so that D equals AX plus BY. So, OK, what does that mean? Well. If you take uh, something else on the right-hand side, not D, but maybe like 2D, you could get a solution by just taking 2X and 2Y, by multiplying everything through by a common factor. So what this is showing us is we can solve the equation AX plus BY equals N whenever the GCD of A and B divides N by taking the appropriate multiple of this one solution that we have here. So there's still more you could ask. Here, you could ask, uh, well, what about the converse? Like, what happens if the GCD of A and B doesn't divide N? Or you could ask uh, this statement that is, maybe I don't just want one solution to AX plus BY equals N, but I want to understand all of the solutions. So that is not something that directly follows from the argument that we just gave. But it's not much more complicated. And this is exercise four of section 8.1. This will be on homework two for you to solve. So let's consider this Diophantine equation. Uh, this is just, you want to understand the set of solutions to some collection of polynomial equations. In this case, uh, we just have this one equation. And that equation is a linear polynomial in x and y. So consider this Diophantine equation, ax plus by equals n where a, b, and n are integers, and a and b are non-zero. And let's suppose that we have one solution, like the solution we're given up here that we can use to get a solution here. Well, suppose we have this one solution. x0 and y0 give one solution. That means a, x0 plus b, y0 equals n. And the claim is that you can use this one solution to find all the solutions. So you'll prove that the full set of solutions is given by x has to be this one fixed solution x0 plus some integer times b over the GCD of a and b. And y has to be that one fixed y0 minus the same m times a over the GCD of a and b. So I will let you think about this. But I'll say that it's kind of like the setup in linear algebra where you're trying to solve a matrix equation ax equals b. And if you have one solution and you understand the kernel of this matrix, you can get all of the solutions.